Hello and welcome to another episode of Wannabe Entrepreneur. Today I am having a casual conversation <laughs> with uh, Dagobert. Is that how I say? It? Did I say it correctly? It's pretty good. Yeah, it's pretty close. It's like bear, like a bear, like an animal. So yeah, Dagobert. Dagobert. <laughs> and um, so I I met Dagobert on um, on Twitter. I'd, I like I've I've met a lot of people now on, on Twitter and it, it's a great platform to find other entrepreneurs and to find interesting people to chat with. And uh I don't recall which tweet it was, but I just yeah, shoot you a, me a message on uh, Twitter and say like uh, do you want to chat because I I realized that you have a very similar path as mine. You also quit yeah. your job, a software job to <laughs> to start your own company. And uh, you are kind of, I, I even read your tweets and they are very similar to what I've been experiencing, you know, like understanding right, that yeah. you need marketing and all of this stuff. So I, I thought, okay, let's uh, just have a casual chat about our struggles, about our projects. And yeah, thank you for uh, for accepting it. Yeah, I mean, happy to. It's always fun to to talk with an, another founder, or like see the struggles, because it's funny, like you always feel like, you're alone and you have you're doing it wrong and you're not cut out for this and yeah. then you talk with other founders and you realize they are the same and we're like millions of people like who think we we are uh, we are uniquely weird but we are not like it's it's fun yeah you know it's it's i feel that it's kind of the same effect as social media and instagram you know when you look on instagram and you see your friends or yeah you only you know, see the sexy pictures exactly stuff, yeah. the sexy pictures and they are you know having the time of their lives and you look at yourself in your underwear in your flat like fuck what am i doing yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and it's the same with uh with entrepreneurs i see entrepreneurs having a lot of success with a lot of making millions you know, yeah exactly making millions and i feel okay i'm the only one is it the same for you Oh yeah, I mean now I'm I'm over it now, but uh, yeah, for so long I felt like I felt like if I couldn't make millions in like two years, it was because my product was like completely fucked or like that I was the worst entrepreneur ever. Like it felt like if I didn't make a lot of money quickly, I had like some very fundamental flaw or something. Yeah, uh, and I think it's because we see so many headlines of like, and I actually I'm tired of these headlines like because uh, like they don't and they usually don't tell you anything interesting it's all, always going to be like hey i just made you know i reach uh, 30k uh, monthly recurring revenue in one year yeah i yeah. mean awesome but <laughs> like and usually people like this when they say this they don't tell you anything i mean they just tell you their success but you don't learn anything from it except oh yeah you know we just had a good product yeah thank you but it's not going to help me are you are you referring to the to tweets mostly uh, that... tweets like anything like you go on like indie hackers you see tons of stuff like that uh you go on twitter you see tons of stuff like yeah. that i mean any kind of media related to even linkedin but like linkedin it's normal because like, there's only that there yeah. but every time i mean well, that's now, just now linkedin is changing a bit now you can also see those inspirational <laughs> videos and uh, you know people overcoming diseases it, it's turning out like a <laughs> like a facebook you know something like this yeah i'm trying to i mean i left facebook five years ago because it was getting too political and i lost almost all of my friends from it so i was like <laughs> i'm gonna leave facebook it's too unhealthy but yeah. linkedin man i mean linkedin it's so i mean it's hard because for me you know my startup is like it's a product that's uh for new entrepreneurs and early stage founders so there's a lot of sense that a lot of these people can be found on linkedin so i should probably do it Yeah, but I feel like on LinkedIn, everybody is wearing a tie, and it's just making yeah. me uncomfortable. <laughs> it's true. You, it's funny because sometimes I try to share something on Twitter and and on LinkedIn, and Twitter is yeah. super chilled, you know. But then every time I transform it to be, you know, shareable on yeah. LinkedIn, I think, how can I make this more professional? You know? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, you have to. Oh uh, my god! And you know, the fun thing is, I, I created my startup because I wanted to get away from that. I wanted to get away from like having a boss, but it's not just having a boss. It's uh, I don't actually mind having a boss. What I mind is having someone and having to pretend, you know, 
I don't mind having someone telling me, hey, we, I think we should do this. Let's do it. I'm like, I'm fine with that. But when I have to pretend because there's a client and he needs to be happy, so you need to watch what you say. You need to be a bit fake. That's what I can't stand. Yeah, you know? yeah, and yeah. so that's why I created my own company so I can speak whatever I want. I can dress however I want. I can do what I, I can work when I want. And even though I work way more now, but I, at, at least yeah. I feel free. And yeah, exactly. It's a it's a weird feeling, right? Like we yeah. work much more, but then but we work because we want to, I guess. Yeah, yeah, and how and the way we want to, and we can say you know we can we can say fuck off to anything. Uh, but where did you used to work before uh, starting? Uh, your company is called Logo Logi, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, so before Logo Logi, I was doing. I mean, I was always into freedom. Like, basically, my story is I started building, I'm 32 now. I started doing websites when I was 15. Mm -hmm. uh, initially, I was just wanting to learn how to do video games because I was just like 15 and into video games, which is yeah. very, you know, common. And, yeah. and I wanted to like design video games. And I thought, okay, uh, let me see if I can do that. So I, you know, downloaded some 3D design software and I tried to do that. And I was not good at it. I was like, really, really not my thing. But I still like joined a small team of like, let's create a video game together of like teenagers doing that. Yeah. And they needed a website. So I started building the website. And then I saw how cool it was to build a website because I felt like I could create something and people would see it and interact yeah. with it. And I really loved that. Yeah, I just, you know, the feeling of having something in your mind and just with a laptop transform it into a real product that you know people can use man yeah amazing i mean like right? when you first start doing that and then when you first start making some money from it it's crazy i never got to that part <laughs> yeah. But, yeah, i can <laughs> okay yeah yeah i can i can feel that yeah so then i just did that um and i made did some you money make money with... did you make money with the game yeah i mean it's funny like Uh, so I started doing websites and at 16, I was like, I, I did some websites about video games, more like trying to talk about, I mean, you know, video games walk through, like, how do you complete a game? Because I was into that, but like, I couldn't make any money from it. And so at some point, but I love doing websites. I was so, I mean, once I started learning to program, I was addicted and I just created websites all the time. So anything mm -hmm. was, you know. Like they tell you, you need to try tons of ideas until one stick. I was doing that all the time, like yeah. without thinking. I was just creating so many things for fun. What was your and technology? Was, What technology were you using back then? So that was like uh, PHP. Mm -hmm. uh, that was, yeah, PHP and then just HTML and CSS stuff. I wasn't into JavaScript or anything back then. Just PHP, static. I mean, not static, but like, you know. Uh, how, did you, how did you learn with 15? You know, uh, there was an amazing website in France at the time. Doesn't exist anymore. That was basically a guy who was passionate about that and who taught you everything for free, online tutorials. It was a huge website. I mean, it was so popular that it became one of the top uh, overall teaching web uh, company in France since then. Like it pivoted into a big teaching company okay. because of how good the website courses were. And I remember after three months of uh, learning and struggling, I finally got it. Like I finally, I remember I was doing PHP tutorials and I, and I finally, after three months of trying and just kind of like copying and pasting and like recopying what the, the tutorial told me, yeah, I just finally got it. I mean, I was making like a loop or something like a wide loop and it just clicked. Like I understood everything. I was yeah. not everything, not like some genius, just like just the <laughs> basics, you know, just the basics of like, because up till then it was always like, where do I put the semicolon? Like everything was complex. Yeah. And then it became, oh, okay, I have the basics now. I can do anything. It's kind of riding a bike. It's like uh, riding yeah, a bike, yeah. right? Yeah. So even if you, I mean, I, I was still like a noob, but I could ride a bike and that's a yeah. completely different yeah, feeling. Yeah. The same, like for, for me, I don't even actually remember how i learned it probably yeah some website as well but i remember like my first website you know because when you build a website if, if you don't know anything about websites like you really don't know anything like how is what is a website how come yeah, can yeah, you, yeah. you don't know where to start so like yeah. all of the exactly i didn't know how to start and i was like you know on googling and my first in my first website was static html Uh, with the uh, mm -hmm. with some PHP, but I, I didn't know like anything about databases or whatsoever. So I would ask people to input 
their information and then send them with as an email to myself and then yeah. i would generate the the myself you know i'll just copy paste that information yeah into, no it makes sense HTML. Yeah, that was my process are the same yeah so yeah. definitely yeah so you made money you made money with your yeah um, no the money i made because so i did the video games website but it didn't make any money you know the show american idol yeah yeah, yeah. And uh, there was, well, there was something called French Idol, that like the French version of yeah, the same yeah. show. Yeah, we also have it in Portugal. Yeah, okay. And so uh, there was this guy who was, so I was 16, and he was making so much buzz online. Everybody talked about him at school. He was so talented. You know, that was like the first part of the, of, the, of the season where like they start doing like the castings and, into, and like mm -hmm. he was just making so much noise. And I started, you know, that was before YouTube got big and before like, the big media companies like the tv channels be before they gave you access to their programs online so you have you had no way you had to turn on the tv you had no other way to see the show and i was on like a pirate forum of people you know pirating the videos and sharing them online and i just like started like i bought the domain of the name of the guy christoph uh french idol i mean that wasn't that but that was basically what it meant yeah uh that was the domain name because that's what people would search on google and i just made a very sexy website i mean the sexiest that i could back then because i was already at my 10th website so the website looked good and it was like all the videos downloadable for free in a not in hd but like uh, dvd quality which was a big big deal back then yeah and uh and then but like next to the download links there would be an ad, but like the ad was like stuck to the link. Like there was zero pixel margin between the two. So tons of people made the mistake of clicking the ad. Of course, that was my whole plan. <laughs> and, uh, you know, just 16 year old trying to make money. And I remember it fucking worked. And the night of the final of the show, and he won, obviously, I, cause everybody knew he would win. He, I made like $150 in one night wow. and I was, I mean, at 16, I was fucking amazed. Yeah. I was amazed <laughs> by this. And I was just, every time I was refreshing the Google, you know, AdSense uh, page, it would, it would be up like a few bucks. So that was, and in total, I think I made like 1500 over like a year, wow. uh, you know, a few wow. months. And so, no, you didn't have any issues by using uh because you're using so that his, was, his that, brand, was right? that was like the first year and the next year i was like i'm gonna go industrial i'm gonna prepare a website for every candidate so whatever happens i'm gonna be good you know so i made like i prepared it three months ahead of time super fancy website i added like commenting system for people to talk about the performances i added ratings of like how do you rate the performance i got crazy I created a website, new domain name, and then like after a few months, no, a few weeks, when the hosting provider, they sent me an email from them that was coming from the network, from the TV channel. Yeah. Uh, because this year there was, they were actually launching their own video online platform. <laughs> and they were like, uh, you need to stop this. So I just completely stopped it. I was so scared. I stopped everything. I put everything offline right away. So I guess that that got you hooked in it in coding so before you starting uh your company where were you working oh well then that, that's funny so that was my experience as like an entrepreneur so i was like seven, 16 17 but quickly after that i kind of like got hooks because i got i started working as a freelance for some uh, web design and web uh engineering companies in france mm -hmm. and i started working making way more money because i could just build a website and i mean initially i was getting paid very little but I mean, as I kept going, I eventually made uh, thousands of dollars per website that I would build. And at the time, I, all I wanted was to leave my parents' place, to make money. That's all I wanted to do. So I started freelancing and I freelanced for like almost all my professional life. And the only time I got a job was like the last thing I had like a few years ago. But mm -hmm. I almost always freelanced, you know, as an engineer and also as a web designer. I mean, I did everything. I did web design, engineering, uh, marketing also a bit, but mostly SEO back then. So did you, did you, did you go to college? No, I mean, I did, but like after a couple of months I left, it felt useless. I was basically, after one month, I, I had already made like $2,000 from building a website from someone. Yeah. And I was like having to go to school and it just seemed like, like bullshit. So one question. So, is it the same 
because you are a freelancer, right? Which is yeah, you are an entrepreneur. You are can you are your own boss, right? But yeah. you in the end you are working for others, right? You yeah. And I'm always I've never done any freelancing. I I've worked okay. for software companies, and I I I also enjoy working for others uh, okay. because if i identify myself with the product right so i i love product building and if i yeah. really identify yeah, myself too. with the company yeah. with the product you know i really enjoy it and uh, what i'm afraid as uh, if i end up going also through the freelancing uh, way if i cannot make any any money from my project is that uh, as a freelancer you yeah you are your own boss but you you are also not part of the company actually so they just you are a hired gun no you know, it depends because, like, by following that instinct, it actually, you know, it's kind of like, uh, it's probably not something I should say, but I assume, like, it's like meeting, like, a woman or a woman meeting a man. Like, mm -hmm. initially, you just meet a few people and then you see which one you really like and then you start a relationship with that person. And that's kind of like the same thing. Like, I feel like I just freelanced. And so when I was 20, some client with whom I was working great, this guy actually moved to Moscow in Russia to create an e-commerce website. And he told me, you know what, Dago, just join me and I'll, I'll pay for everything. He was like 45 and I was uh, 20. He was like an old business guy. And he, and he wanted to build this website and he wanted to bring me in because we had worked together and we enjoyed it. And so I spent one year doing only this project, for example. And it was an amazing experience. In Russia? And you went to Russia? Yeah, I went to do that for one year. That was a lot oh. of fun. <laughs> uh, you know, and, and then like a few years after that, like two years after that, I went, I mean, I worked remotely mostly, but I worked with a U.S. company with a friend uh, and I helped him build his uh, social network startup for one year too. So, you know, it's like freelancing. It allowed me to like work directly with like founders and yeah, creators yeah, of companies. Yeah. And then by proving myself, but also myself by finding who I love working with, then it, then sometimes it made sense of like, let's do it full time. And I would stop taking other work and just focus on that client. So mm -hmm. it's quite, kind of like, you know, best of both worlds for me because I could okay. just, you know, experience so many things and, uh, you know, dive deep when I wanted to. But then why did you get a job then? After doing that freelance thing for so many years, I was still frustrated of having to pathways and start over again so many times uh but i didn't actually consider creating my own company i don't know it always felt like too scary and something i wouldn't be able to do so i never considered it so i thought you know i'm bored of freelancing so i should just so i started chasing more money basically i thought it would make mm -hmm. me happier so i was like let's get a job in the u.s where it's way bigger salaries and let's try to get that and see how I feel. And I, and I became my goal of like, let's get a hundred thousand dollars a year job. Let's find that. Let's find a way to get that. And I was hoping that this would give me, you know, a right balance of like making money, being, you know, happy with that and also working on the same thing for a long time. So I did that, but eventually I got bored of that too. And I, I think deep down, it's funny. It's like the first thing, like when I made the French Idol website, I had everything I wanted back then. I was creating my own thing, making money yeah. on my own terms, having fun. And the thing is, because I so wanted to be free from my parents, making money, stuff like this, I started chasing the money instead. So I did freelancing. Then I did having a job. But like at the end of it, all I ever wanted was to create my own stuff, have fun, enjoy the process. And hopefully make a shit ton of money, but that was like secondary. Yeah. For for me, and I, I was um, having a chat here in in the podcast a, a while ago with a with also a friend that is also a freelancer. He has his own agency, and uh, mm -hmm. one thing that he, he said, I think it made total sense, which is he also worked for the, for others as well, and he really enjoyed. But there was always something missing, and. And that's yeah. something is that it wasn't his company, you know, and uh, it that's is, what I, exactly that's what I feel as well. Sometimes, you know, I enjoy the people, I enjoy the product, I enjoy everything, but it's not mine. You know, it's not me that it, it's creating this, you know? Yeah. Uh, and it's not your vision. It's not your yeah. exact goals. And it's just and I think the worst thing is you don't confront yourself to reality. 
Like you're just, it's basically someone else who has the responsibility for that. And that's a good and a bad thing. It's a bad thing in the sense that you have to do whatever they think. And it's a good thing is that you don't have the anxiety of having to figure it out. Yeah. Because once you're on the other side, like I am now, it's a lot of anxiety to build your own stuff and be alone in that. And yeah. am I be building the right thing? But I feel like, yeah, it's about, uh, it feels really, there's something missing when you work for something, but it's not coming from you. Like it's someone else who yeah. has something coming from themselves and you just stick yourself to it. You're following them. Mm-hmm. And there's nothing wrong with that. But like, I think for a lot of people, you also want to express that thing that's inside you. Yeah, it's kind of being an artist somehow. Like you have to create something. Not sure if it's an artist, artist, but like this will to create something. No, it's, yeah, I it's mean, always I agree. There. And, uh, and uh, every company I worked before, I always tried to somehow conduct my own experiences and implement my own features. You know, I always try to be more than just a software developer. And every time they would block me somehow, I would get very frustrated. But then yeah. I would try again. <laughs> you know, so it's yeah, 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 you yeah. know, it's it's there. And um but tell me more about the uh, so pitch me logology. Okay. So before I do that, I have to be completely transparent. There's somebody <laughs> talking me on the live chat of logology and I'm like Shit, do I keep recording the podcast or do I try to make that sale? So I think that's a very interesting thing to share with the people yeah, listening. I think you should try to make the sale. <laughs> you know, it's a very interesting thing to share with people. It's like, we're not like rock stars making a shit ton of money. We're just struggling and hoping to make any sale work. And it's the most important thing for us. So no, I'm just going to tell the guy to wait a bit. I'm sorry about that. No, no worries. Oh, okay, cool. He just wants to do a business collaboration. So usually when people say that, they're not going to buy anything. So <laughs> I can just be like, yeah, talk to me later. You know, that's <laughs> usually that's what it is. So it's done. Like the guy is okay with that. That's fine. Cool. Pitch me Logology. <laughs> okay. Dude, this is fun. This is fun, your format of like having a casual yeah. conversation. <laughs> you know, if yeah, I like, make a sale during this call, uh, you're going to hear me shout and celebrate. So dude, I will, I'll hope. fetch a beer. I'll fetch a beer and celebrate this. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. So the quick way of saying it, it's a way to get a designer quality logo for your startup in five minutes. And so the story behind this is my wife is a graphic designer and she specializes in, and my wife is my co-founder. She specializes in logos. And for more than 15 years, she's done logos as a freelance. Like me, she was freelancing mostly. Mm-hmm. And she had people, I mean, at the height of like, so like three years ago, before we started, she was at the height of this. Every month she had new people coming in. Hey, can you do my logo? Uh, you know, I love your style. She did logos from some very big startups in France. Mm-hmm. And she, but like a logo from her is like $3,000. I mean, euros, 3,000 yeah. euros or something like that. You know, it's a, it's a long process. It takes a lot of work. And, and so every month she would have people do that, but also tons of people be like, Hey, I really love your logos. Can I get one for my startup? She would tell them the price and they would be like, Oh shit, I have like, only 200 bucks. It's way too expensive. There's no way I can afford that, uh, which makes sense. I mean, you're just starting out. You have $10,000 for your whole project. You yeah. shouldn't be spending 3000 on branding. Don't do that. Like, it's stupid. Never. And actually, some people actually came in and be like, oh, okay, I have 10000 but I'm still going to spend all that money on branding. We were like, no, oh you're going to fail your project. You should just like use that for like, you know, marketing or whatever. And so we thought, you know, I'm an engineer. You're good at logo design. I wanted to leave my job because I had kind of become diligent with the money and stuff. Mm -hmm. And we thought, how can we make this work that you do, uh, that people love, more affordable? And so we started thinking about that. And we, and basically logology, what it is, it's like working with her, but fully automated. So you have three Mm -hmm. steps. Step one is just like you would do with her is we ask you questions about your product. So what's your vision? What's your values? So not your product, more like your whole company. So what's your vision? What are your values? 
who is your target audience? So it's the kind of question she would ask, you know, if you were working with her. So we made it into like a questionnaire, like a quiz online. So you fill that quiz. It takes around five minutes on average. And then at the end of it, we tell you, okay, this is your brand personality. So it can be, you know, any kind of, there's like 10 different ones. It can be a visionary company. It can be a kind company, can be a playful company, stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And then mine is playful and original, by the way. Oh yeah, makes sense. I mean, it <laughs> matches with the with the the logo of like you know the wannabe entrepreneur thing. Yeah. <laughs> totally matches. And so and so from that, we know your brand personality, and we also ask you like your industry, what your startup is about. Yeah. And and now the big thing and the big work that took us a long time to build is in the background. So my wife, she designed more than 750 logos so far. And she basically designed tons of logos for every kind of brand personality, Whoa. every kind of industry for the startups. And she just designed tons of logos like this. Everything from scratch, everything from like what she can think of, you know. So like, how should I make a logo for a kind company in the productivity app you know how do i make yeah, a logo yeah. for these guys at the end of the process uh, you basically answer the quiz and then we match you with the right logos from the one she created so that's the core thing of logology but are, are they unique the logos no so the idea is like when we started we wanted to make all the logos like only unique purchase and stuff like this but if you do this it's going to cost like 500 per logo if you want to make any money Yeah. So we started like this and people told us basically, if I have 500 logos, I would just hire a designer and get yeah. a custom or something like that, which made sense. So we decided to go like, okay, we're going to go for people who are just starting out and who care more about having this quality branding, like just like professional process, but yeah. automated and affordable when you're just getting started. So it's now, so we decided to go from like 500 for unique and move to like a hundred uh, and we even have packages starting at 50 yeah. for just like, and it's a license. And the idea is like, it's for when you're just getting started and you cannot invest too much in your branding, but you care about having something that has meaning that's designed by an expert and that you can, you know, and that making you look super professional. Let's say you get a logo from, from us like this, like you pay a hundred bucks and you get a logo from us like this. So it's not unique, like it's a logo from our catalog. Uh, you know, somebody else might get it in the future. It's a possibility. To be honest, it happens very rarely, but it can happen. So you don't have the guarantee. Mm -hmm. And from that, you can then come back. Like the idea is like you use it to try your product, you know, to build your MVP, to do your first version, to get your first customers. And once you start getting some traction and you feel like, okay, now I want to protect my brand, I want to trademark it, you know, whatever, you want to do all that, then you can come back and then you can upgrade it and you only pay the difference, you know, you only add some money. Mm. And, and what we do is we're going to spend an hour with you on the phone. I mean, Lucy is going to do that and then, uh, you know, see with you how we can make the logo that you picked more unique to your brand. Yeah. And you upgrade and then you can just, she's going to make uh, custom versions of the logo only for you. And then you can get it uh, uh, completely unique uh, like that. And you can trademark it if you want. So uh, um, because I, I opened the website and I, I did the, the quiz and uh, I got a logo. What yeah. keeps me from just taking a print screen of this logo and use it without <laughs> paying? Nothing, you know, basically that's the, we, we struggle with that for so long. How do we do this? You know, and the thing is, there's no solution. You cannot prevent someone from taking a screenshot. You just can't do that. What you can do is you can add like a watermark on top of it. You know, you can do that, uh, you know, like some kind of yeah. uh, weird design on top of it. But if you do that, it just kills the experience. Yeah. Like it just starts looking like some weird product, like weird template or whatever. And so we don't want to do it. It's a logo. Like, it's not like uh, software that nobody knows uh, you're using it. It's your fucking logo. So once you start your website and you start launching on Product Hunt or whatever, and your logo, everybody sees it, well, then you're exposed. You know, like, it's mm -hmm. obvious if you stole it. You know, we know. 
And can you do something about it? I mean, we own the rights, like everywhere. We show the copyrights everywhere on the site, which protects us. And mm -hmm. so we can just, you know, sue the guy. So you, you built this website and you you released. I, so you said it took a, a year to build it? So it took a year and a half to build, yeah, Whoa. because... Basically, for six months, we just try to figure out what to actually do. Then tons of time to prototype, and we released it after more than more like eighteen months or something. We released. And how did you, how did you release? So, in in my experience, and what I try to do, and you can tell me if you do the same. Since I don't have any my own community, I try to use someone yeah. else's community. So I go to Reddit. I I try to go maybe to LinkedIn share it and to see if i get some traction is that the same for you yeah that's what we did i mean we we talked about it with friends we went to reddit we went to indie hackers we added it to a few startup directories you know and we got some traffic like this at the beginning there were so many problems that on the website that we didn't think of i mean not too many actually just one main problem uh that we required people to sign up because before they could do anything so yeah. That was a mistake because people just wanted to see the logos. And even right now, we're still like not showing too many logos before they complete the questions. And people are like uh, not a yeah. fan of that. So we're working on that. But just removing the uh, need to sign up, it finally got us yeah. some actual sales. Because, you know, logos are is definitely a problem. Like I, I've started a lot of things and I'm terrible at designing. Yeah. And uh, But as you said... I also don't want to spend a lot of money. Like even like fifty bucks is already. I mean, it's not yeah. a lot of money, but when you're starting, you know, you you have no idea if you do work, and um, and there's also a lot of options. You know, there's a lot of open source logos, logo generators. You can go on Fiverr and like for ten bucks get a logo as well. How do you compete with that? We didn't know about all these int uh, details of the market uh, because we were more used to people in the startup world and who were more into branding themselves. So we didn't really think about Fiverr and all. But what we, so how do we compete with that is we don't actually compete with that because the people who buy from us and we've actually had like our 150th sale like the other day uh, so it's starting to get some sales now 150 mm -hmm. customers wow. so we were happy about that for and so when did you release by the way early may uh, last year okay. so that's like basically a year and a half mm -hmm. a bit less than this but we struggled to get traffic for a long time so that's why the sales is not too big But the thing is, what we notice from everybody who buys from us is most people, they would never buy anything on Fiverr. They would never get a logo on like a logo generator. And the reason is these are people who have some basic understanding of branding and they know that it's like, it's work. Like it's not just like a logo because, oh, I just need a logo. It's like people who understand and who value branding, mm -hmm. having a personality in your brand, expressing your personality visually, you know? Mm -hmm. And they see that as like an actual craft and something that has a lot of value. So for them, we are like cheap. Everybody from like the US or Europe who told me, they told me, nobody told me it was too expensive, but like a few people told me you should charge way more. We have some testimonials from some super famous uh, indie hackers with very successful companies and who bought the logo from us. And they said, literally, we have this on our testimonials. It, it was even better than working with a custom designer. I paid for like 400 euros. Wow. It was better than this. And it cost like 100 and it took 10 minutes. And now you, you, you're speaking about something that really gets me thinking, which is I, so I would never th think on branding uh, when I'm building my yeah. stuff. Uh, and maybe that's a huge mistake. Uh, because it makes total sense. Like you need to have a branding, you need to have an identity for people also to take you seriously. You know, when you show up with a with a shitty logo, most people will be like, "Okay, this is a, a kids project." You know, uh, but it's always my approach, and uh, maybe it's a, maybe it's definitely a mistake. Maybe I should definitely focus more on branding, on marketing as well. As I, I've seen that you you tweet about this that. Uh, Yeah, you marketing, know, yeah. Marketing is 50% or more of my work as a yeah. as a entrepreneur. 
and I hate it. I hate marketing. <laughs> it's so frustrating. I just want to build something and I want people to use it. But sometimes yeah. I just think, okay, why are people not using it? Is it because I have a bad product or is it because I am bad at marketing? About branding, I think, and it's something we had to come to terms with with my wife, is that I actually agree that with you, you don't need branding to get started. You don't. I mean, the, if you have a shitty logo, it's going to hurt you. So you need to be careful. So you need to have something at least decent and professional, definitely. But it's not going to change. It's not going to make you successful. You just can look at Google. First version of Google look like shit. Mm -hmm. First version of Facebook. First version of YouTube. I mean, you don't need a brand to be successful. That's bullshit. So we never believed that. What we believed is you need to look at least decent. And the second thing is, usually when you get a brand that you really love for yourself, it gives you a ton of confidence and it gives you a good starting point and a good edge to mm -hmm. get going. And so, you know, we had to come to terms with that But like, because everybody tells you, you want to build a startup, build something that's urgent and that's, uh, uh, you know, recurring and that's uh, super needed. That's like, and we're like, you know, we are not something that you need a logo. You ha you need a logo, but to have like an amazing logo, like it's not going to change much from having a regular logo. If I'm completely transparent, I don't I, think it will. I, I, I had the same opinion as you. But and and you gave great examples. Uh, let's say whatever Reddit as well, Hacker News. It's yeah. still very yeah. early. It's, it's, But the thing yeah. is, can we really compare our companies, our projects with this gigantic? You exactly, know, and that's exactly why so we created this. Is that you know, for us and for people who are our customers, like trying to do a small SaaS, like small indie hackers, young startups. What you want to do is you need to find your small niche in the world where like you find your customers and they make you profitable and you make some money and you're happy. For that, then branding can become something that's part of your personality. That's part of like what makes you stand out. And I feel like it's just one more weapon in your arsenal. You know, like it's just like you have your message, you have your product, you have your branding. Mm -hmm. All of that, you know, is part of the same thing. And Actually, for us, so our own brand, Logology, what we noticed is we have so many people complimenting us on our landing page because we did a landing page. You know, we took a, did a lot of work on it to make it very pretty and beautiful and original. And it keeps getting people interested and it makes people trust us immediately. They feel like, oh, these guys, they know what they're doing. Yeah, with, the, with your design. It, it really feels when I when I access your website uh, logology.co, it really feels that I'm entering in in one of those fancy modern design studios. You know, oh, thanks. It really yeah. feels like that. And then when the questions start coming, it also feels like that because the, the, there are questions like which movie is your brand, you know, or which superhero yeah, yeah, yeah. is your brand. And I found yeah. it it really yeah the experience that you're feeling is like. You know that you're in the modern, you know, Google-like design, you know, uh, workshop, yeah. and they are asking all of these questions, and that's true. And everything, all this process is for free until uh, until you reach the logo, and then uh, yeah, it's it's an afford affordable price for sure. And you're you're absolutely right when uh, it's something that you have in your arsenal, especially when you are not building a Google-like product or a YouTube. Of course, if you are building YouTube or if you're go building Google, fuck it, you don't need it to be pretty. You're building Google. I think you made a very good point. Like the reason why YouTube and Google can get away with a shitty logo is they just have like a revolutionary product. Exactly. And I know we all believe, me myself, I believed that for a long time that we have a revolutionary product. But we usually don't. We have a good product. We have something that can make a lot of, you know, positive stuff and help people and be very useful in the mm -hmm. world. But it's not like such a revolution that you can get away with a shit logo, shit website, you know, buggy app. You cannot get away yeah. with it. And as I remember Facebook for like so long, they had like a super slow uh, phone app like 10 years ago uh, because they had done it like as a HTML version and not native. I remember that. But like it was Facebook, they could get away with a slow app for one or two years. Yeah, it yeah. didn't really impact their growth. But if you're just like 
just a small indie hacker, people have like five seconds to decide if they give a shit about you or not. Well, you know, it's yeah, better to have true. a clear message, a fast loading it's website, a, fence, a good logo, and a consistent brand and everything. Uh, you know, we, we changed it. My, my first version was super ugly. And it was enough to see that people kind of were interested in it somehow. Yeah. And, now, and mm -hmm. then I worked with a designer friend of mine. And I asked him to just like retouch whatever I built. So I didn't ask him to to build it from scratch, but I asked him. Yeah, like, okay. Let's poor guy. It. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and uh, but you know, it gave me so much more confidence. You know, now I could share this app with other people. And the right, uh, design. Yeah. In the beginning, people would ask about the design and say, "Yeah, the design is not very good." And since I I changed it, I changed it um yeah it's n no one ever complained about it uh, anymore i just wanted to to know more about um the marketing part because i you know yeah. it's something that you as a software developer i can see that you definitely have an entrepreneur spirit you know how to sell as well what is your take on on marketing is it something that frustrates you what have you learned Tell be honest it. it's still very mysterious to me it's not something i don't really It's like, like I said, with programming, after three months, I felt like I could build anything. Yeah. Well, I don't really feel that with marketing. I feel that a bit. I thought, I thought I had that a couple of weeks ago, but it was not really there. And now I'm like, I still don't really understand the relationship between what I'm trying to do. So like bring traffic to my website and actual sales. You know, I don't see the, the, the map of the thing happening. There's so many variables, right? Like I feel that. We we are also using most of us, I guess, to market our products. We use social media, right? Yeah. And social media, they have their own algorithms, and you have to. And that, I hate this because you need to understand how the algorithm works. So at this point, forget about the user. What you want is to satisfy the algorithm, right? And that's exactly, the, and I, that's what I'm doing with Twitter. Exactly, yeah. What what, what have you discovered? <laughs> So I'm happy because I need to confirm this, but I feel like I'm getting somewhere with Twitter now. I mean, I have. You have I mean, a lot I've, of, you have 3,000 followers already, right? And I was at 200 in May. So Whoa. because I did that, I mean, I was shit at that. And then I got some viral stuff uh, randomly, like some cheer luck. It was, you know, it was a funny thing. Like, so end of May, uh, so that was like four months ago now. I was so desperate because we didn't have much sales. We sold like three or five logos a month. And both of you quit your job. You are only doing this or not? Yeah. Yeah. And we What? are using our savings. <laughs> so we're basically down like $80,000 in three years, basically. Shit. So you're not joking about your father-in-law jokes. He really wants you to get a job. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not a fucking joke. It's <laughs> fucking scary. Yeah. And he, he doesn't... Uh, I mean, he stopped talking about it because like it's just too uncomfortable for everyone. Oh, when my we, God. We, so, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, we quit our jobs. Uh We are down $80,000 trying to build this thing. 80? Yeah, well, you know, three years living on your savings. Ah, right. Yeah. So you mean you're only investing your own life livelihood? Yeah, right? yeah. All the rest you're yeah. building. So you, the only money you're investing is in, a, well, to live. It's like, you know, uh, rent, uh, food, uh, you know, and wow. like yeah, two yeah, days yeah. of vacation in three years. <laughs> you know, this kind of stuff. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, and yeah, end of May, I'm like... Uh, so frustrated because I feel like I'm going nowhere. I tried everything. I tried like uh, indie hackers. I had some successful, you know, blog posts there, but yeah. like it's not enough to make money. I mean, not not much. Then I try Reddit, but like you can only launch once. You know, you're gonna be you're not gonna be launching every yeah. day. You know, yeah. you can't be like every day. Hey, I just launched this. People are like, fuck you. I mean, you just launched last week, <laughs> so you have to find <laughs> something else. You know, and. Uh... Before before you tell me, I just wanted to explore these feelings because I feel yeah. that I, I I'm probably in the same position. So you 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 are you have less savings and you're not able to to get it started. Like for me, I feel that I cannot think about anything else. I think that like yeah. you know, getting customers cool. is the priority number one. Or it's maybe it, yeah. let's say food, and then getting customers and social life, and uh, you know, oh, watching yeah. Netflix, whatever vacation. Everything goes to a second secondary. Was it the same for you? Oh, I mean, I mean, it was already a bit like that when we were freelancing. So, like with Logology, it just went crazy. Like 
we took like a week of vacation in two years and a half, especially since my co-founder is my wife. We live together, you know, exactly, at, the, yeah. at the apartment. And we're like, so we have to find ways to not talk about logology and be like, oh, you're also like my wife. Hi, <laughs> nice to meet you. Oh, you have eyes and hair and skin. And you're not just like the person I talk to on Slack every day because, you know, we had Slack. And so we have Slack. But, uh, but yeah, I mean, like, but we still like, I mean, honestly, like September has been pretty terrible in terms of sales uh, so far. And uh, even though August was great. And so it was so disappointing and so stressful. I mean, we were on, I mean, we have had trouble sleeping for two weeks. I mean, if I'm completely honest. So, yeah. I mean, yeah. I mean, once you put all your eggs in the same basket, it's, uh, I mean, what, what is the secret though? Like what, what can you, what can we do? Like the only thing that I, that it comes to my mind that what I've experienced is that in the end, you just have to be tough. It's not self-confidence. It's not, you know, meditation. It's just like, being tough oh no it's not confidence because like confidence will will leave you i yeah. mean i mean I, i'm like honestly i'm a super confident guy i mean i'm actually pretty fucking arrogant usually <laughs> you don't look like it <laughs> no but it's because now i've been beat up by this shit but like <laughs> i'm like very arrogant and that's why i created this startup i felt like i could do better than any kind of manager i ever had i thought they were stupid they didn't know what they were doing i could do a better job You know, I'm, that's how I feel. But like confidence, it's just like, uh, it was just a way to get started. But once you launch and it's not working and you have put already so much money in it and well, you, it's not confidence that keeps me going. Honestly, at some point it was even like faith, like something completely uh, weird. It's like, I mean, it's faith, but faith because Even when we were like, like last year, having like only one sell per month, if you have one sell per month, it's tiny. But if you talk to the customer and he tells you which, which we did, which happened and they tell you, wow, I love your product. I mean, it's so yeah, amazing. Yeah, it's yeah, so yeah, good. Yeah, yeah. Then you feel like keeps you going, right? It's enough to keep you going. Yeah. Yeah. You feel, and you know, even if you don't make, I mean, you make like 70 bucks in one month and you're like, okay, there's yeah. something there. We need to find it. Dude, but that's exactly the same with me. Like with both with the podcast and with my app, you I have daily users. Like so, every day there's about like 50 people coming to the app. Now the podcast is a little bit more, like yeah. 50 listens. Less sometimes goes to 100 listens per day. You know, it's but it's been like this for a while now, and I know yeah. that this is not enough to be able to pay the bills, but it's not yeah. low to the point that I think okay, let's quit. It's not hopeless. Yeah. It's not hopeless. And that's that's the worst. Because then you're always Exactly. Like yeah. I go to bed and think like, is it tomorrow going to be the day? Am I going to wake up to you know a thousand users because someone retweeted whatever I posted or something? Okay. You know that let me tell you the story because I went through that. And I actually have a terrible thing is that at the end, I mean, I, I had that thing of like an incredible month where everything is taking off. That was last month. Yeah. I'm going to tell you how I got there. You know, you want me to tell you this? Like, yes, 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 yes. Go I, mean, I, I think it's fun, but it's because I have no other choice but to laugh at how <laughs> terrible this feels. You know, that's why I create so many memes. Yeah, dude, I feel it. I feel you. It's exactly the same. Okay. <laughs> we create okay, memes good. and people think that you are funny, but no, it's... <laughs> no, we're crazy. just like crying, like hearing yes. memes. Oh, shit. <laughs> you know, but we just need to take the edge off. Uh But yeah, you, yeah. You, you're telling. So in the end of May, right? You're desperate, and then yeah. I mean, I, I mean, you know what you tell told me about having no sales, but just enough to feel hopeful. Well, yeah. it lasted well since launch. So we launched like uh, early May 2020, and up to May 2021, we were oscillating around five sales a month. And again, we need 60. so not enough, and no way of doing it. So we tried everything. I mean. I put like $500, $600 on Google ads trying to bring people. We had zero sales. I sponsored newsletters, spent $200, zero sales. I mean, I tried Reddit ads for like $100 and nothing. So I was starting to get fucking desperate. And I had some, the sales came from like posts on indie hackers and Reddit, but that was still just tiny. And so end of May, I was so desperate and I was like, you know what? fuck it, I'm just going to become one of these fucking marketers who spams everywhere and puts my link everywhere and see if somebody buys it. So I just was so pissed. 
I went on Twitter. I looked for like, I mean, I used the Twitter search feature and I looked for like, what are you working on? Or like, what's, what are you building this week? And you know, all these posts that are supposed to be nice, uh, uplifting things for indie hikers. I was just yeah. like, I'm going to monitor <laughs> this shit and just going to spam it with my link. And fuck it, I'd have nothing to lose anyway. That's a good uh, idea. And at the time, I had like 180 followers. I mean, I just had an account with like friends from way back. It's nothing. My account is nothing. And and I did that for like a few weeks. And and one day, one of my spammy tweets got viral. And when I mean viral, I mean 100 clicks on my link in 24 hours and like wow. two or three sales. Uh, so that was big a hundred visitors to my site in 24 hours. And I was like, Oh wow, there's something about Twitter. There's so, like, it has power. It has way more power than like a community, like yeah, in the hackers yeah, yeah. or like Reddit. Like there's a viral component to it. Yeah. That's huge. So I started, so I started being a bit more on Twitter, you know, kind of slow, but like still trying to be a bit more on it now, a tiny bit hopeful, trying to understand it. And then, Funny thing, you talked about how do I prevent people from stealing a logo? And one day, so a couple of weeks after that buzz on Twitter, somebody comes to my website and on the live chat, they tell me, hey, you know what? I'm going to steal your logo. And there's nothing you can do about what it. What the fuck? <laughs> I mean, he told it in an even creepier way. I don't even I mean, I have the screenshot, but like he told it in a way that was even creepier. He was like, oh, nice logos. I was like, yeah, cool. He's like, I'm never going to pay for it, though. And I was like, uh, well, you know, if you sign up, you can get free advice and maybe it's going to help you. And then you can come back when you have money. And he was like, oh, I can just screenshot it. And I'm like, <laughs> was it your father-in-law? No, 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 no. That was some <laughs> fucking guy. I mean, I, no, no. Uh, and <laughs> no, he's not that evil. Oh, but, okay. uh, and I'm the joking. guy, he's just like very anxious and pissed. But and this guy. And so he tells me, I'm going to screenshot it and then i'm like still leaving the benefit of the doubt because like after chatting with so many people you see some people they're just like kind of sick and stupid and you need to like give them the benefit of the doubt and maybe at the end they turn and they show you that they they're not bad yeah and so man. i told him well uh no you know like it's copyrighted you can't actually do that uh and he's like Oh, well, I guess you shouldn't tell anyone. <laughs> you know, I'm just imagining his voice, but that was just like a fucking creepy thing. Just don't tell anyone, bitch. You know, that was so fucking creepy thing. Yeah. Uh, and so I was so pissed. Uh, I screenshotted it and I put it on my Twitter and then it went viral uh, again, two weeks later. And I actually started DMing with some super famous indie hackers about it, like uh, Arvid Karl, like this guy creating, writing the amazing books. Yeah, and so it got me hooked to like, wow, if I share my emotions and if I share what I feel on Twitter, it can hook people. So that was yeah. the start. But but then sometimes it happens that you share the same type of tweet and doesn't go viral. Okay, so now I can tell you what I understand about Twitter and how I went from at that time. Uh, early June, 200 followers to now, uh, I mean, I'm closing in on 4,000, but I started meeting other people with big accounts and we started discussing strategies because basically once I got this few sales, because this got me sales, I mean, this tweet again, and I was like, I'm just going to do 100% Twitter. So for the past three months, I did 99% of my time is Twitter. I do only that because yeah. I'm like, man, I need sales now. I'm going to see if I can do this. And what I understood about Twitter is and I'm getting so excited. I'm getting so excited. It seems that you're going to tell me like the, you know, the secret sauce or something. Well, it's a secret, <laughs> but at the same time, it's like, it's a secret that takes a shit ton of work. So it's not like the best secret. So the key is, why is it that you can have a tweet like that? And the next day you have a tweet that's as good and you get like a thousand impressions and two likes. Yeah. Why? And so the key is you need to spend 10 times more, 10 times times more time on interacting with others mm -hmm. than your own tweets and that means and so what do i do every morning now every morning uh because what happened is i would have a viral tweet and then tons of people replied to it you know mm -hmm. and so when you do that what happens is you only interact on your own tweet because like you're just talking with people you know in a closed circle of like on your own content 
And if, whenever I did that, the next day I publish a tweet and nobody's seeing it. So every morning I go on Twitter, I have tons of notifications. I mean, every morning I have like, you know, 50 notifications every morning. I mean, wow. almost. It's like Christmas. But, <laughs> yeah, every time. But like, it's so much work now that it's not even Christmas. It's like, fuck, <laughs> I have to do this. <laughs> but yeah, no, it's still a bit, it's still cool. So I wake up and I don't even look at my notifications. I go to my feed and I put my feed in recent only, I mean, recent first, you know, not yeah, like the popular yeah. tweets. I put it's it like in timeline. The latest, mode. yeah. Yeah, latest. And then I just scroll until like I go back to the tweet that I saw last, last night. So I just read, I don't miss anything. I just like, look at everything that everybody I follow, but I only follow 250 people around. But like, I look at what everything put since, uh, you know, since last night. And every time I have a tiny bit of thing to say, I do. So I like tons of tweets. I comment yeah. on tons of tweets, probably 30 comments, you know, in one hour and a half in the morning. I do that every morning. Then I go to my notifications, I reply to everyone, you know, like, stuff like this. And then I leave it breathe. Because, like, if you do it too much, it's not good either. But mm -hmm. that's more like kind of like super advanced technique. But And then I have my scheduled tweets. I have two tweets per day, one text and one meme. So, you know, these, <laughs> these things, uh, you know, come out. And then after that, uh, I let my tweets, you know, breathe. I let people interact with it. And then I reply to everyone. And then at night, I do the same thing. Like 12 hours later, I do the same thing as in the morning. So like usually at 9 p.m., super late, I just go on. I'm going to do that after this call, actually. I go on Twitter and I look at the recent tweets again. And mm -hmm. I go back to the morning, to the last one, and I reply to everything. I try to bring value. I try to, you know, like stuff, to interact with people. So I basically spend three hours a day just interacting yeah. with other people's yeah. content. And the reason why this works, you know, most people, they don't have the tweets in most recent first. They have just like the home view, which is just, you know, just the algorithm showing you the best tweets for you. Yeah. And what, and the reason I do this and the reason it works is because I never use this view now, but when I used it, I remember how it was. If I had just interacted with someone, it would show me their tweet. Exactly. If I had just sent a DM to someone, it would show me their tweet. So by spending three hours a day interacting with as many things that I feel. I mean, I, I shouldn't, I, I'm not like being fake or anything. So I try to do yeah, yeah, things yeah. that inspire me. I mean, as soon as someone interacts with you, so like they reply back or they like one of your replies to their content, as soon as they do this, you know that within 24, 48, 17, two hours, you're going to show up in their feed. Yeah, Your tweet is going to show up. And the more you interact with them, the higher it's going to show up. And that's the key. That's like the secret. It's funny because this is something that I've also kind of figured out. Yeah. And that's kind of how, how I was able also to grow my tweets. So I started like with 30. Now I'm like in 170 or something. Nice. And, um, and you know what I've done as well? Because I have another account for my app uh, for Change It. Yeah. I invested 100 bucks and paid someone to do this. I had someone going every one hour per day. Yeah. Uh, it's actually someone I knew, so I kind of trained him. He's a yeah, student. Okay. And that's exactly what he did. It's a, it's climate change topic, so he knows uh, how to create value. And that's he okay. would go to the, the hashtags and to the feed, also go to latest and get and answer these people. And that was able to get in 100 bucks, I got like uh, 100 followers. So, okay. So that's, so that's a way to gain followers. It's like few comments on accounts on topics and then uh, people see your answers and they follow you so you cracked it you cracked it man and then you you shared it with us so unfortunately it's not a magic potion you just have to no. put a lot of work yeah but I'm, i'm hopeful that maybe someday i'll be so big doing that that i can kind of like relax but i'm not but why sure. not hiring someone to do that well i mean right now i really want to build like authentic connection with people yeah you want to understand your customers too right And it's not just that. It's like, you know, it's kind of like my friends and my fr and people I care about. So I want to yeah. like actually look at what they're doing. I don't uh, want to have someone else do it for me. It's not the it. same thing, you know. It, yeah, I yeah. mean, that's that's a great technique. Thank you for sharing. And uh, it's only, you know, sometimes I feel that you end up being kind of a slave of social media, right? Oh, I'm definitely a slave now. I mean, I'm just like trying to push it and see how fast, how far I can go. 
I'm like trying to get like 10,000 people by the end of this year. I'm going to see if I can do that because of how much reach and how much uh, people saw my tweets. Yeah, yeah. Uh, well, you know, people just are curious sometimes and they click on my profile and they see my website and sometimes they buy. And, you know, as much as people coming from indie hikers or from reddit it's kind of the same that's why i like twitter too because it's easy for people to to check your account and then click on the link it's much easier than yeah. youtube for instance or or instagram, uh, or like instagram. i have like a, yeah. a friend I, I mean another indie hiker i met and he's doing instagram yeah. and he has like 10 times less people clicking on the link uh, compared to me for yeah. the same number of views and that's just yeah you shouldn't i mean instagram is terrible for that but twitter is great Dagobert, it was a lovely chat. I think it was good also for me to you know speak with a fellow entrepreneur and uh, to to understand that it's not only me, you know that yeah, this, oh, no, this kind of shit it, it yeah. happens on to everyone, and um, that's kind of what's also what I want to build with when I be entrepreneur is like to speak like this conversation with you. It will help so many other entrepreneurs that maybe listen to my to my podcast and. Um, I, I'm also yeah. trying to build like a, a community, like a Slack channel with a lot of people that yeah. I, that I that I interview are there to kind of help each other. And of course, I will also invite you. And uh, I understand that a lot of people sometimes cannot join, but it's nice, you know. It's it's a little community of entrepreneurs where you can support each other, and not, none of us is extremely successful. <laughs> <laughs> but it's good yeah well that's why we hang out together i mean i'm soon as i'm rich i'm leaving you dude <laughs> yes <laughs> no, I'm, no, I'm kidding I'm yeah kidding. Like, yeah. bye guys i got it <laughs> but we'll have another chat once you're a millionaire well then then you won't speak with me but <laughs> no okay i'll i'll invite you to my mansion you can yes come. yeah uh, <laughs> dagobert thank you so much i will link uh, your um twitter profile and your uh, website logo no logo. link my yeah. website because at least i can make sales hey I guys can link just buy your logo <laughs> just come to my website and buy a logo okay yeah definitely whatever just... you do buy a logo <laughs> even to be honest even if you are not completely sure if you want to buy a logo go to the website because it's really amazing do the survey and then decide i, I would advise everyone if you're starting your company just do this because it's it's really a great experience yeah and then and then if you wait uh, only if it starts at 15 bucks so it's not that bad and uh and definitely yeah. think think about it and uh, thank you so much for joining this was another wannabe entrepreneur see you tomorrow <laughs>